In this nugget, we're going to look at gas exchange in plants. Firstly, what is gas exchange? To exchange means to swap. Gas exchange is when gases swap over across some sort of surface, for example, a cell membrane. Plants exchange carbon dioxide and oxygen with the air or water, just like animals do. Before we move on to how they exchange gases, let's just quickly recap why they need to exchange them at all. Respiration is a chemical reaction that releases energy from glucose. Glucose plus oxygen makes carbon dioxide and water. And this releases energy. Glucose and oxygen are the reactants, and carbon dioxide and water are the products. These are also the waste products. And here we can see the symbols and the shapes of the molecules. Photosynthesis is a chemical reaction that produces glucose from carbon dioxide and water. So carbon dioxide plus water requires energy from the sun to start the reaction and produces glucose and oxygen. Carbon dioxide and water are the reactants, glucose and oxygen are the products. And here we can see the symbols and what the molecules look like. Photosynthesis produces glucose, which is a store of chemical potential energy. Respiration releases that stored energy to carry out the life processes. The reactions are the reverse of each other. For gas exchange, it depends on the process which gas is taken in and which is given out. In photosynthesis, oxygen is given out and carbon dioxide is taken in. But in respiration, it's the other way round. Oxygen is taken in and carbon dioxide is given out. Plants respire and photosynthesize, so they are giving out oxygen and carbon dioxide and taking in oxygen and carbon dioxide. The overall effect depends on the time of day. Here is a plant. All living things respire to release energy. So this tree is respiring all the time. During the day, the plant is also photosynthesizing. When the sun is bright, photosynthesis is happening much more quickly than respiration. So overall, plants take in carbon dioxide and give out oxygen during the day. It's not that they aren't releasing carbon dioxide and taking in oxygen. It's just a smaller amount, so we don't see the effect overall. There is an overall release of oxygen and uptake of carbon dioxide because the rate of photosynthesis is higher than the rate of respiration. At night time, photosynthesis stops because there is no light energy to start the chemical reaction between carbon dioxide and water. The plant still respires though. Remember that all living things respire when they are alive. This means that overall carbon dioxide has been released and oxygen is being taken in. There is an overall release of carbon dioxide and uptake of oxygen because the rate of respiration is higher than the rate of photosynthesis at night. This is the structure of the inside of a leaf. The palisade tissue is specialised to collect sunlight, complete photosynthesis and produce glucose. The spongy tissue is specialised to allow gases to move between the outside of the leaf and the photosynthesising palisade tissue. The gases are exchanged through holes in the bottom of the leaf called stomata. On either side of the holes are guard cells. They are responsible for opening and closing the stomata. Let's have a look at the stoma in more detail. In this photograph, this stoma is closed. The guard cells are able to open and close it. Here is a stoma with the guard cells on either side. We can see the cytoplasm, the nucleus, the chloroplasts, the cell membrane, mitochondria, the cell wall, and the vacuole. During the day, the guard cells take in a lot of water. This makes them swell up and push away from each other to open the stoma. 
At night, the guard cells lose a lot of water. They go floppy and come together to close the stoma. It is important that the stoma are open when it is light so that the plant can take in enough carbon dioxide for photosynthesis. In the dark, the plant does not photosynthesize, and the small gap left between the guard cells is big enough to allow oxygen in for respiration. So during the day, we have carbon dioxide moving into the leaf and oxygen moving out. That is the gas exchange during the day. Carbon dioxide in and oxygen out. At night time, the guard cells lose water and close the stoma slightly. Remember, respiration is still happening because the plant is still alive. But because there's no photosynthesis, the exchange is carbon dioxide out of the leaf and oxygen into the leaf. Exchange surfaces are very similar no matter where they are found and what they are exchanging. In plants, you see leaves. And in animals, you see lungs. Let's compare leaves and lungs. Lungs contain millions and millions of tiny air sacs. This gives the lungs a spongy texture. These air sacs are called alveoli. The lungs have a massive surface area because of all the alveoli. In humans, it is between 50 and 75 square metres, which is roughly the size of a tennis court. The alveoli are very vascular. This means they have lots of blood vessels to bring carbon dioxide to the alveoli and carry the oxygen away. They also have very thin walls, so the gases only have to diffuse a short distance. Leaves also contain spongy tissue, which has a lot of air spaces. They have a large surface area where you can add all the leaves of the plant together. That surface area can be enormous. Think of all the leaves on a tree. Leaves are very vascular. This means they have lots of vessels to bring water up to the palisade tissue for photosynthesis and carry the glucose that has been made away. They are also very thin, so the gases only have to diffuse a short distance. They differ from lungs in that the air is not moved by the plant the way we breathe. Instead, they have many stomata spread out across the bottom of the leaves that gases can diffuse in and out of. Plants also do not have a pumping organ to move the fluid in the vessels. Plants use diffusion and water pressure to move substances around their bodies. The key thing to remember about gas exchange surfaces are that they have a very large surface area, so a lot of gas can diffuse at once. They are very thin, so the diffusion distance is short, and they have lots of vessels to move things around the rest of the body quickly. In animals, they are often ventilated too. This means that air or water is physically moved in and out or across the exchange surfaces, such as in breathing. To summarise, gas exchange is when organisms swap gases with the air or water around them. Plants exchange gases through small holes in their leaves called stomata. Plants respire all the time, but they only photosynthesise during the day. The overall gas exchange depends on the time of day. In the daytime, photosynthesis is happening faster than respiration, so overall carbon dioxide moves into the leaves and oxygen moves out of the leaves. At night, respiration is happening but photosynthesis isn't. This means that overall carbon dioxide moves out of the leaves and oxygen moves into the leaves. Gas exchange surfaces have the same main features in animals and plants. They have thin membranes, a large surface area and lots of vessels. Keywords. Gas exchange, the swapping of gases between the organism and its environment. Tissue, a group of similar specialised cells working together for a purpose. Photosynthesis is a chemical reaction that produces glucose and oxygen from carbon dioxide and water. Respiration, a chemical reaction that releases energy from glucose. Glucose, a type of sugar. It is a store of chemical potential energy. Stoma, plural stomata. Small holes or pores in the bottom of a leaf that let gases in and out. Vessel, a tube that transfers a fluid in an organism, for example, a blood vessel. Diffusion, when particles move randomly from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration.